Welcome to another tutorial by Brando Consulting. In this tutorial, we're going to do a deep dive into receiving using the barcode scanning technology provided by Fishbowl Inventory called Fishbowl Go. You'll see on the right hand side of the screen, I have Fishbowl Go up, but on the left hand side of the screen, I also have Fishbowl Go up. The difference is this is the iOS version on the left, and then on the right is the more popular version the Android version which runs on the TC70 which is the most popular scanner by Fishbowl. Most likely you've purchased the TC70 or one of the series of the TC70. So first of all I want to talk a little bit about the difference between these two and the receiving. I'm going to tap receive over here on the left and I'll tap receive over here on the right. Okay. So notice the first thing that comes up is a list of receivable purchase orders. It's not going to match this list here because this list shows all statuses, but on Fishbowl Go it will only show receivable. Notice the first difference in Android has a refresh button and iOS does not have a refresh button. That's one reason I would recommend using Android. But if you already have an iPhone, then this is, this is convenient. Let's start out by tapping on P14. I'll tap on that, and it opens up what you see here on the screen is over here as well. Notice there is no edit button. There's just a receive button. If I tap on a purchase order, I'm going to tap on a different one over here you'll see we have an edit button in the Android version. Next thing we want to do is just show you the difference here. In the iOS version, if I tap on a part to receive, it receives it, just like that. And if you want the edit screen to show up on the iOS, then you need to turn on the setting on the Fishbowl Go screen under receiving that says always show edit screen okay and it's it's an all or nothing thing in iOS in Android you can tap on the edit as an option so right there I feel like you have a little more control with the Android version than the iOS version the iOS version if you use the truck it's kind of interesting you'll get an error message almost every time okay so, and then in order to receive it, you'll hit save after receiving. Okay. Then in the Android version, you can highlight and then click receive. Highlight, double check, then click receive. Or highlight, then click edit, then make any edits that you need. Say we're receiving a different quantity or even receiving to a different location. There we go, receive to a different location and then tap receive. Now you can get that edit screen to appear over here once again if you use the, the setting right here. Okay. All right, so we're going to use the Android device since that's what I found to be recommendable. Let's go ahead and start the receiving of this purchase order. So I'll void that and start over. Okay, then we'll go back and start to receive. Now I'm going to receive with a common process and that is receive into receiving and then move to put it away. So we'll start by tapping on P14. Now you can type in P14 as well. Let's go back there. You can type in P14 and that will pull it up. But one thing that does not work is just typing in 14 and that's because you can receive a sales order which starts with an S or a transfer order which starts with a T. So Fishbowl does require you to type in the P. So be sure to either tap 
or type that in. Tap edit and now we're ready to receive. Here's a list of the part numbers, then a dash and a description. I'm just going to put a little plug in here that when you are creating your part numbers, it's best practice to have alphanumeric characters with no dashes because Fishbowl delineates the part number and the description with a dash. So it may be a little bit confusing to some new people at your company if you have dashes in your part number. Then under location, notice it's saying that we're going to receive it into the receiving location. As you saw before, we can change that by selecting edit and then changing the location. And then also notice here there's a quantity as well. But don't forget to look at the unit of measure. The unit of measure is probably the worst error spot. So when you're first starting to use Fishbowl, do some quality control and make sure that your receiving people are trained to look for the unit of measure and make sure that the unit of measure they're receiving is matching the unit of measure that is on the mobile device. So we've got four things to look at, the part number, the description, the location we're receiving into, the quantity, and the unit of measure. Let's receive this first one. Now I know what's gonna happen with this one. Uh, let's say this is a single one, I'm gonna click receive, and it brings us to the edit screen because it has a lot number. So it wants us to put in a lot number and then click receive. Okay, so that one's received, it's disappeared off of the line, but let me tell you another common place for human error, and that is not clicking the save button. Watch what happens on this side of the screen in the client desktop when I click save. Okay, by receiving it here and clicking on the truck, it's just put in a queue and it's waiting to see what happens. It's not actually received. Be careful with that. Um, I had a customer just stop using Fishbowl Mobile altogether or Fishbowl Go because they thought it didn't work and it was broken. And it actually works just fine. You just have to click the save button. Now, if you do go through and receive everything, let's just do that. If you go through and receive everything on this very last one you receive, watch what happens over here on the screen. Everything is received. Voila. So it does automatically save it if you receive everything. So those are the two things to watch for, the unit of measure mistakes and the... Uh, the saving mistakes. Okay, let's go to a different purchase order. This one has more quantity. Let's see, I've got another purchase order with more quantity. There we go. Purchase order number 12 has more quantity. So now we're going to receive purchase order number 12. We'll pull that up. We'll receive it into stock count the quantity, tap, and receive. Notice so far I have not scanned anything, right? You're probably extremely disappointed. Where's the scanning, okay? Well, let's look at that for a second. In order to scan something, we need a barcode. Now, your vendor may have provided a barcode for you, and if he does, then this is the time to scan the barcode. This is... Uh, let's see, we're on Greece. We can scan the barcode. See what happened? Nothing changed with the quantity. So it didn't just go to the edit screen. You have to have this edit, edit screen setting turned on for that to happen. So if we need to change the quantity, click edit here. Now, if you want to scan every single item, you need to have a setting turned on right here, scan each individual item. And that's an all or nothing thing. It's not turned on for one order and turned off for another order. It's turned on for all of them. So watch what happens 
if we turn this on, we'll click save. I'll need to log out and log back in in order for it to take effect. Go back to that order. And now we have 100 of these items. Notice I didn't click save, so they all came back. We have 100 of these items. This is the ANSP. And watch what happens when we scan the ANSP. It takes us to the edit screen, and then we tap receive. Now this looks a little clunky in this demonstration, but you'll have the, your scanner and the Android tap screen will all be in one, right? You'll be handle, holding it all in one. So you'll scan, tap, scan, tap, scan, tap, scan, tap, okay? So if you want your guys to both confirm the part number is correct and get the correct quantity and scan every single item, then this is what they'll be doing. Scan, tap, scan, tap. Okay, works great. Okay, so let's turn the scan each item off. It's an optional setting. A lot of people want to need that setting. Fishbowl came out with it about a year or two ago. I can't remember exactly when they had that scan each item setting. Okay, so let's go back into receiving into this order. Now let's talk about barcodes. Let's say the vendor does not have a barcode and you need to barcode it. If we come over here to receiving, Fishbowl has a receiving label, but it's blank if you do not first receive the parts. Okay, so think about that. Uh, we have to receive the parts first before we can get a barcode of our own. Fishbowl has a couple other options. Actually, one of the options is by us. The other option by Fishbowl is the part barcode PO. Now that one does give you barcodes before you receive it. However, it does not give you a barcode for each item that is received. In my opinion, that's not a big deal. You might print out some more and waste a little bit of paper, right? So not a big deal, but this will give you a barcode for each quantity of the item. Notice this part is repeated as many times as the quantity exists. There's 10 of them. There's going to be 10 barcodes on here. So that's another way you can do it is print out the PO barcode. If you want to see all your options under reports, labels, you'll see some more options. Well, I just showed you the part barcode by Avery. There's also a one-off if you have a zebra printer and it comes out in a roll. So that's another way to do it. And then the third way I wanted to show you is a custom report by us. This one also requires you to receive it first before you label it. Let's receive some so we can see those two that are blank. We'll go here and receive, let's receive, receive. I'll just quickly go through and receive those. So now that we have those received, the receiving label will show up and this is this is a palette label basically it's four by six and it shows multiple parts on one label then the one we made shows one part per label now this big empty spot is blank because that's where the lot number goes if there's a lot number okay so that shows one four by six label per part now there's a lot of different ways you can print out labels a lot of different designs you can choose these are just three designs so now that we have it received into the receiving location the next step is to move it from receiving to stock okay let's do that 
Of course, you can receive directly to the shelf, but in this demonstration, we're just looking at this process where we receive it and print out the labels, label it, and then put it away. All right. So that would bring us to the next feature, move. In order to move it, you need the location barcode and you need the receiving location barcode. So think about this. You'll want to put a receiving barcode on your pallet jack, your forklift, or your picking cart. Kind of funny, but you'll see how that's convenient for scanning purposes if you put a receiving barcode on those uh, moving equipment. So we'll go from main receiving then we'll scan the part A and A B A B there we go and the quantity is 10 now when we do this we first want to put it on the cart pallet jack or forklift put it bring it over to the location then do all of our scanning at the destination location so then the destination location I'll scan that whoops be careful not to scan destination location in the quantity. Make sure the cursor is in the right spot. And there's our destination location. The final step is to move. And there we go. So once again, we scan from receiving. We're going to move ANSP. Let's move an ANSP. And we're going to move 100 of those, put the cursor in the two location, then scan the two location. There we go. And then finally, let's do, uh, I think I have a HEDO. Here we go, a HEDO barcode. We'll go from, once again, receiving. Now remember, we're going to put this on the cart roll the card out to the location or the forklift drive it out to the location then once we're there we'll scan the receiving barcode scan the part count the quantity we're putting away and put the cursor in the location and then boom scan the destination location and we're done now this one Greece, that's an interesting one. Notice it doesn't have a location. That's because it's a non-inventory type item and Fishbowl does not track non-inventory item locations or quantity. So when you put it away, Fishbowl won't let you use the move feature for non-inventory type parts. Okay, so thanks for joining us today in this tutorial with a deep dive into receiving comparing the Android to the Fishbowl Go and uh, looking at the process of receiving it into the receiving location, putting barcodes on it, then putting it away. Now that process may not be the right process for you or for everyone, but that's the process I decided to do in this recording because that's a, that's a pretty popular process. If you'd like to see more videos from Brando Consulting, don't forget to subscribe.